Hello, in this quick video I'm going to show you how to take a boring slide like this of bullet points and turn it into something that looks more like this, where each bullet point comes in one after the other. Much more appropriate for a video or for a webinar. So how do we do that? Let me first exit the slideshow and uh, we'll get rid of uh, this one here. So here's our, here's our slide. Uh, our starting point, the, the horrible slide with the bullet points all revealed, which means that the audience is going to think about uh, reading ahead and phasing out and doing something else. So the first thing we'll do, let's just make the heading a little bit more interesting by just changing the colour. We'll make it bold and we'll increase the size um, because we're going to have much less information on the screen when we get rid of these bullets and replace them with text. Let's make the heading nice and big. Now we take the bullet points here and uh, we turn the bullet points off with this button here, get rid of the bullet points. Then what we want to do is, and I'll just move this up here just out of the way a bit, what we then need to do is select each bullet point in turn and then on the keyboard I'm going to cu cut with Control X uh, and then paste it somewhere else on the slide and that will create, as you can see here, a, a separate text box. Now let's move out to the bottom, do the same thing here, we'll Control X and we'll control V to paste and we'll paste that text there in the box. Uh, we'll take this one, control X, move it somewhere else, control V to paste it. And I'll, again, I'll move out of the way over here. And then we'll just, uh, I'll just make that smaller. So we've, got, we've now got our text rather than as four bullet points as four lots of text. We've not had to retype anything. We've just simply used copy and paste or cut and, cut and paste uh, to create separate text boxes. Then we need to format the text, so uh, I'm going to centralise each bullet point on the screen. I'm going to make it 44 point size, and that's probably going to be enough. I'm happy with that. Um, so what we then do is select any word or bit of a word and click on the Format Painter. In fact, I'll, do I'll click on it twice and that'll, per that'll turn it on. So we have a little paintbrush, and what we can now do is we can paint across there and it's the same. We can paint across there and it's the same and uh, we can also do the same with this one there we go so now uh, if I turn the font painter back off again we've now got our bullet points and let's put them roughly in order uh, we don't have to get them exactly right just yet and you'll see why in a little while um, also with this particular one it's too long so let's uh, let's shorten it a little bit so it appears on two lines we'll chuck that one there for now okay so we now have uh, four text boxes. This one isn't centralized. Um, let me just centralize it again. There we go. We've got our four bullet points centralized. They're not yet, they're all in different places. We'll, we'll stack them up later on. But the next thing we do is sort the animations out. So, what we'll do is we'll click on the animations tab up at the top. We also need to make sure you've got the animation pane. Um, by default, your slide will be look like this. But make sure you click on the animation pane here because you'll want this on the right hand side. What you then decide is what, what effect do you want here. Well, I'm going to have it fly in, but by default, PowerPoint has it flying from the bottom, so effect options I can select from the left. So that's the effect I want. So I want to now apply that flying in from the left to all my bullet points. So if I select the box itself rather than the text, if you've text, selected the text, you get dotted lines round. Select the box itself to select the whole box, and you'll have Animation Painter as an option here. So what we can do very simply, just to save some time, is so we click on Animation Painter, click on this is my second point anywhere there will apply that same animation uh, do it again to the third one and then to the fourth one so we now have a slide that looks like this if I now click on this button here to show the slideshow for this particular slide we'll see we've got as we click on the mouse first click again second point third point and then fourth point so the, they're coming in what we want them to do is disappear as well though so if we again select this box here um, this is my first point. We want that to disappear after it's come in. So we need to first of all we need to add an animation. We have to add a second animation to that because there's already one animation to this box. It's over here. It's animation number one, and we want to add a second one. So if we click Add Animation, and then from this list here, we'll probably want to just straightforward just disappear. So we'll click Disappear, and you'll see it's now got two animations, one and five. That means if we go over to the Animation Painter, the first thing in the sequence will be for it to appear, and then the fifth thing in the sequence will be to disappear. We'll reorder them in a second, but let's get them all to disappear. Let's add an animation here, disappear. Click on this one, add an animation, select disappear. And on this one, add animation, disappear. 
So we've now got four appearing, four disappearing. However, we've got a bit of a problem because sometimes what happens is um, we've only got three here. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Um, so we can see this one here, it's appearing number three, but we're losing it disappear. So I'm pointing it slightly wrong. So let's go to that again, add animation, disappear. There we go, we got it now. Now, two things here. Firstly, it's the, these, are two, these are in the wrong order now. This is eighth and this is seventh. But also this one here, we don't actually need this one to disappear because this is the last bullet point. The last bullet point will probably change the slide anyway. So let's, uh, let's, look, let's select number seven on the animation pane over here and just simply, simply hit the delete key on your keyboard and that gets rid of that effect. So there's only one effect now for board yet, the fourth point. It will appear, but it won't disappear. The next thing we need to do is once we've now got all the animations sorted out, we need to put them in the right order because at the moment it's going to bring them each in one at a time and then when you've got all four on there, then it's going to make the first one disappear, the second disappear and then the third. What we want to do is we want this one number five, which is the first disappearing, this wants to disappear after it's first appeared. So we use the reorder buttons here. We simply move it up so it's second on the list. It becomes a second animation. Uh, likewise, number six here, we want to pull this one so that it, it disappears after it's appeared and again with this one move that up one and we don't have the, the last bullet point doesn't disappear because as I said we change slides at that point so that's what that's this is what happens at the moment if we just click on the slideshow we click the mouse and the first one appears we then have to have to hit the mouse to disappear but we then have to hit the mouse again for the next one to dis to, to appear so there's lots of mouse clicks so let's let's automate things a little bit more so the last thing we do is this first one will appear up here on a mouse click. That's fine. That's what we want. We want to decide when the first bullet point comes in. We also want to decide when it disappears. But as it disappears, as the first bullet point disappears, we want the first one to come in automatically. So this one here, run on a mouse click, this can come in with the previous or after. It doesn't matter in this case. Um, if you've got the previous effect being one that's going to take three or four seconds and you want the next effect to, take, to wait till that one's finished, you'll have after. But because we've had a straightforward quick quick disappear, it doesn't really matter whether it's straight at the same time simultaneously or afterwards. I'll put with previous. Then we want a mouse click to determine when that one disappears. But when it disappears, we want the following bullet point to come in automatically. So we'll go with previous again. And finally, uh, we'll have the, the last bullet point come in at the same time as it disappearing. So essentially, we've got four mouse clicks. Mouse click number one is the first bullet point coming in. And mouse click two is that bullet point disappearing and the second one coming in and so on so if we click on preview we can see the first point coming in we talk about that when we're ready we click the mouse that disappears and the next one comes in when we're ready to move on we click the mouse that disappears the next one moves in and so on so what i would do at this stage now you've only got one more step to do but first what i would do is i would click fi f file save as and i would Go into where you keep standard stuff. Have some standard slides that you use. And I would call this something like bullet template four. It's a template for doing bullets. And I've put the four because there's four bullet points. So what you might want to do is in future, have a, you might have a whole series, one with bullet points, templates three, four, five, six, and so on. So that next time that you want to, and I'll just save that, next time you want to do uh, a slide with bullet points and this happens to be four of them all you have to do is just change the text of these four bullets you've got four bullets set up and all the animation set up just change the text of the four bullets if you're going to do three bullet points open up a different template with three bullet points and uh, it's all set up ready to run so do that open up your template put in the bullet points put in the text you want the final step then is rather than appearing one above the other. We've done that for design purposes because we want to be able to, to see them spaced out. But then what we want to do is we might want them all to occupy roughly the same space. So what we do is we simply drag this box somewhere to, I'll, I'll want them to appear somewhere centralized about there. We take the second one and we drag it so it's roughly uh, stacked on top. We take the third one, uh, we stack that up on top of it. I'll just use the up arrow keys just to fine tune it. So the first line of the text is is lined up uh, and likewise same thing here I'll just get that lined up there so it looks a little bit of a messy slide um, but this is what it does it brings in each point in turn right in the middle of the screen and that's it that's how you create bullet points it takes once you know the process it takes probably an extra couple of minutes on top of writing the text in the first place so it doesn't take long to get a really neat effect Hope that's helped.